everyone. This is going to be another review video of the iFi Pro IESL. And so, for those of you who do not know, I had previously reviewed the Stax SRS 2170 electrostatic headphone system, uh, which includes the SR207 as well as the SRM252S electrostatic headphone amplifier. And so, what is special about these types of electrostatic headphones is that they actually require a special type of operation, a special type of plug. And so for the case of the Stax headphones, you have a bias plug and you have a left plus, left minus, right plus, and right minus pin. So it's a five pin connector. So for electrostatic headphones, they need a special amplifier that can provide the high voltage bias that is needed to electrically charge the plastic diaphragm that is uh, that makes the sound for electrostatic headphones. And so what is special about electrostatic headphone amplifiers is that they typically need to have a step up transformer. So um, inside of this box, there's a transformer. So it takes a 12 volt, 4 watt, uh, yeah, four watt input here. It steps up the voltage so that it can provide that high voltage bias for the headphones. And so typically people have used just the standalone amplifier for powering their electrostatic headphones, but Stax has also made what are known as energizers um, for their headphones. And so an energizer was, they no longer make them, uh, was that it took the input of a speaker amplifier and it did a up voltage conversion from there to provide the bias voltage for the headphones. Instead of having a standalone amplifier unit, it would be a separate box that attached to your speaker amps. Well, Stax no longer makes that. Um, I think the only other manufacturer of such an energizer other than iFi obviously is Wu Audio, so Wu Audio WES. And so the options for people who have speakers, speaker amplifiers already at home are pretty limited to either the Stax SRDX, I believe it was called, um, Stax's version of the uh, Energizer, iFi, or Wu Audio. And so today I'll be talking about iFi's version of this Energizer. So again, the Energizer is what connects to a speaker amplifier and then the actual box, the energizer, up converts the voltage so that you can use your high voltage biased headphones, electrostatic headphones. So on the back here of the iFi Pro IESL, you have the inputs for the speaker amplifier. So R plus, R minus, L plus, L minus, and then there's also speaker outs if you choose to use them. Um, if you use the speaker inputs, you cannot use the speaker outputs, but if you use the other options, which are the four pin XLR input. So if you have a current um, headphone amplifier and it outputs, I believe, more than four watts of power, then you can actually use a female uh, four pin XLR to four pin male XLR and then you can just connect that to here and then turn the volume on the amplifier to maximum and then you can use the IESL with it. Alternatively you can use iFi's Pro ICANN and then you can just have this ESL link which is just an HDMI connector. It's pretty cool actually. So if you already have the Pro ICANN you can just use that IES, the ESL link um, HDMI cable and just plug that into here and you're all set to go. For me, I only have a speaker amplifier so I only use the speaker inputs here. And so speaking of the speaker, what I had chosen to use with this Pro IESL is this gigantic Carver PM2 rack mount speaker amplifier. And so that is what I've been using with the 
Pro IESL during my review period. And just to let you know, energizers have typically taken the form of sound from the um, speaker amplifier. So the Carver amp, this one in particular, tends to be a little bit bright. So the sound coming from the IESL is kind of bright. However, I think uh, the advantage of having a dedicated energizer is that you can use it with any speaker amp or any headphone amplifier with the XLR output or the Pro ICAN if you already have that too. So the nice thing about the Pro IESL is that it was specifically designed to work well with pretty much any input that you give it as well as any output and there are a ton of outputs for this energizer unlike previous energizers that have been released. So speaking of that, let's go on to the front and you can see the different options that you get. So over here you just have the input control so you can use the ICANN with the ESL link, the HDMI cable, balanced input which is the 4-pin XLR from your headphone amplifier or speaker input which is what I have basically been using. The AC termination here, um, it actually changes how the uh, diaphragm is biased um, based on their circuitry. I didn't really hear any difference when I switched this to different modes. Um, supposedly it affects the 3D presentation of sound um, when you plug in your headphones or your electrostatic headphones and I didn't really hear a difference so just an option to experiment with for those who want to adjust the sound just a little bit. And then in the center here you have three headphone outputs basically. So you have a 4-pin XLR so you can actually use this with uh, your headphone amplifier and then still have an XLR output for your headphones so that's kind of nice to have as well as two stacks plug uh, input or outputs. So there's the normal bias one, which is the six pin uh, stacks original um, connector type. So it's the left minus, left plus, right minus, right plus, bias left, bias right. And they also have the pro version of the bias. So the current model headphones that stacked releases all have this pro plug so it's the left plus left minus right plus right minus and the bias for both of the channels so that's like my current SR207 what's cool about this pro connector is that you can actually change the bias of the output so you can have it at the 580 volts which is Stax's standard pro bias um, voltage you can also change it to 540, 500, 600, 620, and 640. So all of these different biases are for basically any other electrostatic headphone out there. So if you have a cost headphone, I believe it's the 600 volt or maybe it's the 540 volt. One of those two is actually the, the voltage required for the cost ESP950. And then the other voltages you can set for other headphones like the Orpheus, actually the Sennheiser Orpheus, uh, the HE60, which is the baby Orpheus, um, the HE Jade from Hi-Fi Man back in the day. And I think there was one, oh, King Sound. King Sound Audio has uh, some electrostatic headphones that you can also use with the Pro ISL. And then finally, on the right-hand side, there's this impedance knob. Um, it basically just changes the volume. So at a high impedance, you're going to have a lower volume from your headphone outputs. And then converse, inversely, if you have the low impedance option selected, you will have a louder volume. So let's talk about a little bit on the inside of this Pro IESL. So on the inside of the Pro IESL, that's actually a pretty cool design layout. So on the left and right hand sides, there's actually a row of capacitors that they call the battery bank. And so that battery bank allows the Pro IESL to keep a constant bias voltage output uh, within plus or minus one volt. So if you set the 
voltage bias to 580, the standard Stax Pro bias. Um, this battery bank will allow that bias voltage to basically not vary at all. So it'll be 580 plus or minus one volt. And so how that affects the actual headphones is that the bias voltage will be kept at a constant voltage. And so that will allow the headphones to have a constant non-variable performance coming out of it. That battery bank is actually comprised of some Wilma film capacitors. So very high quality German capacitors and they all are very fast and at a high voltage obviously to provide the bias high voltage bias and so those are all just basically rectifiers and so for those of you who don't know what a rectifier is it's basically uh, something that keeps the dc current or dc voltage constant so from an ac signal to a constant dc signal and uh, there's actually a pretty cool youtube channel that i'll link right here uh, called electro boom and he has a really cool video for full bridge rectifiers. rectifiers. So I'll link that below if you want to know some more information about those. Um, but anyway, the inside of the Pro ISL on the center here, there's actually two step up transformers. So you can have the input voltage stepped up to the correct bias voltage. So on here, you can kind of see the top label of one of the step up transformers. And then over here, you can kind of see another label of another step up transformer. This one actually has the diagram. So there's the initial winding coil. So your input voltage, the core there, and then the winding coil for the output, the stepped up voltage. And so those two transformers are actually made of special materials. iFi has kind of a, a diagram of this on their website, but this is the actual transformer, this T-shaped box thingy. And that is actually made of two materials. So the two materials are a mu metal, which is a permanent magnet or permalloy. And so that allows the Pro ISL's transformers to have good specialization in low level signals. And so the second material that it's made of is the grain oriented steel. So this grain oriented steel has strands of steel on the same direction and that supposedly helps with uh, high level signals better. And then this shaded and non-shaded pattern, that is what iFi calls Scheibenwicklung, which is disc winding. So you have these discs of coils, windings of the actual transformer and that supposedly helps with the, the signal as well. And so the combination of these materials and this configuration allows the Pro IESL to have very good performance. And the performance is so good that it actually goes beyond the Siemens, Peerless, and Japanese Audio Society's uh, regulations for high resolution. So this actually performs really well. So the combination of both the battery capacitor bank as well as the two transformers that are custom all help with the sound quality. So for me, coming from the SRM252S, which is Stax's entry-level um, solid-state amplifier, going from that to this setup, which is the, again, the Carver speaker amplifier with the Pro ISL Energizer box, there's a huge difference in sound quality. Now, I've heard other step-up transformers or energizers uh, from other places. So Stax, again, had one, the SRD7X, I think it's called, as well as the Wu Audio, I think, Wes. And to me, those have been kind of a, a different sound signature overall, not really an improvement, just something a little bit different. That's the same thing from going from Stax's uh, line of electrostatic amplifiers, their current line, so from their uh, solid state amps to their tube amps, it's kind of a different sound overall. To me, um, the the Carver amp with this Pro ISL Energizer has been a definite improvement in sound quality. So I like to think of this difference of sound quality as a combination of clean power supply as well as uh, balanced outputs. And so the combination of those two both improve uh, the overall dynamics of the sound. So from the bass to the treble, things just sound 
more dynamic and kind of more pronounced and so um, have, having that sound on the stack system sounds really nice um, the headphones are already very dynamic with the SRM252S amplifier and they're just more so with this setup so it improves the dynamics and then it also improves the sound staging and imaging ability of the headphones and so I already thought that again the SRM252S with the SR207 is pretty accurate in the imaging but when I listen to binaural recordings um, like my RMA, RMAF videos um, with that setup versus this setup it's very clear that this setup is superior in terms of the imaging. I was listening to the, the ELAC um, speaker demo that I had previously uploaded and I was able to pinpoint exactly where the speakers were more exactly with this Pro ISL setup. So it definitely helps to improve the imaging as well as the sound staging. Um, when I was comparing the sound stage, so the actual sound of the room of the ELAC speaker recording, the image sound stage was definitely more precise on the Pro ISL setup than the SRM252S. And so just being able to kind of recreate that experience that I had listened to at the actual room in Rocky Mountain Audio Fest and then compare it between these two systems, it was very apparent to me that the Pro ISL was way more accurate for that. So that's the, really the two advantages I hear from the Pro ISL setup is way better imaging and sound staging abilities and improved dynamics. and. The combination of those two are kind of what you get when you switch uh, from a dirty power supply to a linear power supply or just a, a better power supply in general as well as having balanced outputs versus single-ended in general as well. So the the difference in sound quality for me is definitely um, there. Now if it's worth the price that's a different story. So this Energizer unit itself is, I believe, $1,300. So it is quite a pricey investment, um, especially if you consider the other options out there, um, especially like a used SRD7X. That's around $400, I believe, nowadays on eBay. Um, but it's, again, not in production anymore, so you can't really compare that to this. But to me, if you have a setup where you want improved sound quality but don't want to alter the sound signature too much, then the Pro ISL will definitely be that kind of setup. I think, yeah, again, I, I mentioned earlier that the actual speaker amplifier does affect the sound a little bit of the Energizer, but I think if you have a decent speaker amp at home already, the Energizer sound will not be a problem at all. Other advantages that the Pro ISL has over other options is of course the outputs. So if you have different Stax headphones, so the normal bias of 230 volts versus their current line of Pro bias products, you definitely have the option to use both at the same time. Or even if you have different electrostatic headphones, you can still use the voltage bias selector and choose your bias as you wish. So that option I have not seen in any other product out there. So that's a really cool feature is being able to use pretty much any electrostatic headphone and use it with this energizer unit. You don't have to buy a Stax headphone amplifier. You don't have to buy a Cos headphone amplifier. You can just use this. And that's really cool. Another advantage is being able to use all the inputs and outputs. Well, I already mentioned outputs. All the different inputs of this as well. So again, if you already have the Pro ICANN, just use that HDMI ESL link and you're set to go with this Pro ISL. Many of you also have headphone amplifiers and if it outputs more than 4 volt, you can just use a male female XLR cable and you can just plug it into here and use the Pro ISL that way too. So just all the different options you have with this unit is actually very versatile 
And if you have the setup to utilize that, I think it's definitely worth the money. If on the other hand, you don't have any of those and you just need a electrostatic headphone amplifier, maybe this won't be the best option for you and you'd be better off buying one of the, the solid state amps from Stax, for example. All in all, I definitely think this is a very good unit. Um, definitely improves the actual sound quality and not really the sound signature too much of your headphones. And so that's always a, a good thing to kind of just improve your system rather than change it. And so I think this is where the IESL would fit in with that. And with uh, Mr. Speaker's upcoming uh, Ether ES electrostatic headphone, I think something like this will be pretty popular if people already have a headphone amplifier or yeah speaker amplifier and need an electrostatic box basically the energizer unit so a lot of uh, good things going for this unit um, for me personally i think it, it's a nice unit to have but this is a very bulky uh, speaker amplifier and on my desk it's kind of busy so for me uh, buying this unit would have to I would have to reconfigure my desk a lot more to make it a nice clean setup um, but I think it's worth the investment um, especially if I choose to endeavor in Stax's older um, headphones like the um, SR Gamma or even the Sigma maybe who knows but yeah if you're if you're willing to invest in other headphones I think this is a nice unit so I want to thank Lawrence at iFi for letting me use this unit for a couple months and be able to get a nice listen for it and to give me an excuse to get this Carver amp because I've been wanting to get a Carver amp for a while actually. Um, but yeah, so thank you Lawrence. Thank you iFi for letting me use this. Thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions about electrostatic headphones in general, um, feel free to leave a message below or send me a PM. Other than that, thank you for watching and I'll see you guys next time.